fans we are here with our week three recap yes it's late but we're getting it done i am joined with fellow admin dusty day day car welcome dusty. hello <laughs> hi all right guys we're over, we're gonna go over the the records here real quick as you can see canto division the three leaders are the polyrats Nito kings and the toros all with the two and one differential um, record, and also PSG is also there, and he's actually uh, number one due to his differential being plus nine. So New Zealand Kings would be plus what are plus seven, so they'd be second, and Toros would be third place in that division since he's the one with positive differential. Over on the <laughs> Lowland side, uh, <clears throat> we have. Two undefeated teams as of week three, uh, Rapidash and the Tyranitars, which they face off week four. So you're going to want to see those week four battles as they go up. But uh, tied for third place, well, not tied because of differential, but with the two and one records, we it's the Blades and the Four Alligators. And Four Alligators are winning in differential, so they are third place. So, Dusty, how do you feel the season's going so far for these guys? Uh, honestly, I feel like the season so far has been cookie-cutted black and white. Like, all the winners keep winning, all the losers keep losing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's we're only about halfway through, so anything can really change. Oh, yeah. The, here with week four, if all these winners end up losing... And all the losers end up winning. Uh, Kanto Division will be pretty split with their 2 twos. The only uh, constant in the losses are the Tie Roars with the 0-3 record. And the Minioars follow suit with 1-2. and two. But the Lowland Division is a little more segregated in the fact that there are two 0-3 teams. And uh, one and 1-2 team. Mm -hmm. And everyone else is doing pretty good with their two and one and three and zero. But as you said, it is only the halfway point, so it'll be exciting to see who turns it around and who officially makes the playoffs coming up soon. I agree. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first game on the list, and that would be the T Tars versus Grand Bulls. Yeah, Morgan and Yale. And the T-Tars obviously won that one with their 3-0 record here in week three. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yale, he simply got outplayed. He had nothing for that late gate cloister sweep. And he was screwed from that point on. <clears throat> yeah, I liked how in the beginning Morgan kind of, it looked like he sacrificed Whimsicott to set up that tailwind, but it made Gastrid on a beast for a couple of turns. Yeah, it really did. It, it opened up some stuff for that slow mon to actually get some work in. And it's already defensive, and the special attack so high, it was able to take advantage of that double speed. And I didn't realize until this battle, like, after he finally got a shell mat. Uh, shell smash cloister to do some work that I didn't realize cloister had skill link <laughs> yeah that, that's what makes it so deadly uh, most things that get shell smash don't have it but cloister always hitting five times it's very nice yeah so that friggin ice move stab guaranteed five hits oh yeah and breaks to do sash or disguise it's just broken but he finally did what we've been asking him to do all season, and that's <laughs> don't lead with it, clean with it. And he got right. the job done with the 3-0 there. And the next one is uh, Char Chartriots versus Minioars. 
I'm not going to spend too much time on this one since it is my game. But uh, I lost that one because that was the last night he could get the game to play. And I wasn't ready. And I played too fast during the games. And once I got behind, there was no way to get ahead. Yeah, that's that was my note is that you both had pretty good strategies, but once he snagged that bit of the lead, he just kept that momentum. Yeah, what I was trying to do is, um, I, I was hoping he was gonna lead uh, the minior, mm-hmm. and I was gonna thunderfing it with the with the uh, lichen rock, and then excel rock kill it with priority, because he likes to do that show smash lead. Yeah. But that wasn't the case, and I could have played around the Mammoth Swine early, but I was rushing to try to get the battle done because he was obviously about to fall asleep, apparently. <laughs> so it was just like, you know what? It's fine. I'll take the loss. It's whatever on that. And I honestly thought Dragon Claw would have done more. Yeah, that that crossed my mind as well. So, that's all the notes we have for that game? Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, now we move on to the PSG versus Polyrass. <sighs> Paul has turned it around since week one. He has not lost a game since. He is a stall switching fiend. I respect the guy's play style, but his battles are so long, I just get mine them halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> He always knows when to bring in that Nihilego. And yeah, that thing is definitely him. his MVP. And the Polyrath, I think he overpredicted on a lot of those switches. Yeah. And that put him in the bad spot for the rest of the game and evidently led to his uh, demise to that Nihilego. Yeah, once that thing started getting kills, it was, it was over. I mean, the... What I thought was strange was Nihilego wasn't air ballooned, and he had Dawn Fan on Nihilego before it started doing anything, and he could have just took it out then and there. But I yeah, guess, it would have been a times four Earth attack, right? Yeah, and I guess he just overpredicted, like, oh, there's no way he's going to stay in against a ground type. <laughs> and that screwed him over at that point. But that's the PSG versus Polyrath. And next we have the Knights versus the Clones. And this one... Yeah, was that was a, my battle. <laughs> this one was an RNG nightmare. <laughs> uh, <sighs> my notes were both teams played great. Uh, the Knights just got RNG'd at the end. That kind of got them... We, yeah, we... Guard. I had that curiosity about High Dragon versus, uh, what was it, Toxic Rope. Yeah. But, you know, in the end, it is what it is. Like, I have had bad luck this go-around. But at least I didn't lose horribly. The, like, last last week I lost, what was it, five, he beat me 5-0. Yeah, this time I think it was a 2-0. Two, two oh? One. He had one, one oh. left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I personally liked my Chinchino at the beginning, stunning the hell out of his monsters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, that was awesome. And at the end, your Mianfu got cheated with that poison. Oh, yeah, but thankfully, if it wasn't for that, uh, her, I wouldn't have been able to have faked out, killed that pavilion, and it would have swept me, too. Oh, yeah, that was that was key. He had that sleep powder quiver dance set on that. Thing. And I friggin' hate that. <laughs> I do recall on admin battles, he said he's never used that set before. Yeah, that is a fact. <laughs> funny how he's used it in the draft league battle. He's used it in every battle. Trust <laughs> me, I watched them all. <laughs> but uh, other than that, his Toxic Croak set was great. I was going to ask you, though, are you sure you didn't have that thing choice scarfed instead of choice specs? No, I had it specced because Hydreigon is almost faster than every single one of his mods, so I didn't feel like I needed the scarf. Hmm, okay. I, um, I, I did put down that I made a bad move underestimating his Samurai. I thought Facade with Swellow would have killed it. Yeah, so it was, and it lived on like eight. Yeah, I was going for a, hopefully a Swellow Smackdown, but it didn't work out like I wanted. Yeah, you pulled the trigger a little too fast on that one. Yeah. 
I Morganed instead of a Shaw <laughs> Smash. I was going guts. All guts and no glory. But uh, we're going to move on to uh, the Gators versus Toros. And Gators have been playing very well with that ditto. Oh my god, that ditto's put in so much. <laughs> That's in my notes here. I'm like, that imposter ditto for the win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, he did get some good RNG during that battle. But evidently, he just outplayed the Toros in that game. <laughs> I had my favorite thing that happened was Swampert set up Stealth Rocks and it roared in Ditto and Ditto set up Stealth Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, the, for my notes for the Tauros was he played well for having those RNG mishaps early, just got beat by Ditto. That's exactly what I have here. I really like his Tauros because it has that, like it's not set up like a normal Sheer Forcer because it has Ice Beam, like it's not just Attack. Yeah, it's actually a little strategy against those dragon types that he likes to face. Definitely, and Taurus is fast, so that works out really well. Yeah, and it's faster than what you would normally think it would be. I think it has, what, 100 base speed? Yeah. I do. I wouldn't think a Taurus would be that fast, but evidently it is. Man, he's putting it to work. Like, it's done really well in his battles. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's on the kill leaderboard still. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the Kings versus Tyroars. Mm -hmm. And this battle, I don't know. I'm a Kings <laughs> fan. I am too, especially Watching his Rose battle. Raid. His Rose Raid, like, it's making me actually like that Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Rose Raid used, and he's using it almost perfectly. And... Just uh, from the switches and stuff he's been doing in the last few battles, he's really showing uh, his comfort with his team. Yeah, I can't remember the battle, like, fully, but I have, like, starred here, Stuart, excellent switch outs, knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the only thing I criticized, even though it was a near-perfect game that he played, um... He could have saved Differential at the end. And, uh, when he switched in, he left in that Nido Queen on the Milotic. And that was only Milotic oh. and Machoke left. Mm -hmm. I, I felt he could have switched out to Roserade and killed the last two Pokemon with that. And that would have gave him a better Differential with the 5 0. But 4 0 never hurt. He's actually, his Nido Queen work is, like, you never really see that used, but he's actually using it pretty well. Oh, yeah. And I, it. I believe he is using a special. Mm hmm But yeah, he, he's getting those uh, hacks with it pretty good, too. I think he set up some Toxic Spikes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he set up Toxic uh, Spikes, and then at some point he set up either Spikes or Stealth Rock, too, because there was extra rock damage going on. Ooh. But yeah, that his team has been flawless in play. He does have one loss, but i just seen his battles, and it's just like, Dude is one step ahead of all of his opponents. Mm -hmm. And for the Tyroars, it, it's just plain and simple. Poor prep, got outplayed. You, if you don't have the prep before game and you can't guess what your opponent's going to bring and be better prepared for it, that's going to happen. Right, like, I'll just shout out right there, like, if you guys have time, like, I know not everybody has the time in the world. My first two weeks, I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, and that really reflected in my first two matches. Uh, go watch these videos on your DS. You can mock battle. Those mock battles are important. They're not the same because a player definitely has more strategy than a computer. But if you're curious to how you're going to do, uh, just play a few rounds. Yeah, and the thing is, um, the Tyroars actually have the worst deferential in the league. And... It's just like, I think it's all starting with the prep. They're just not prepping. If they would start mm -hmm. doing what, you, what you're talking about, is mock battles and all that, they'd be doing a little bit better. But uh, getting 5-0'd, 4-0'd, he got 6-0'd last week against PSG, it's not helping his case. Yeah, trust me, I know. I, was, I can't remember my first week, but I was 5-0'd. I was and then I, uh, that my first week was bad, and then I got 5-0'd, 
and then I was actually able to free up time and do some mock battles, and I only got one ode. So that makes a huge difference when you get a chance to think about things. And the last game, but not the least, is uh, the Blades versus the Rapidash. Oh my god, this this was my favorite battle for this week. It was so close. It ended with one against one, and Blades left his last Mon with 9 HP. That's how close it was. Yeah, that Infernape set was pretty on the money for what it needed to do. And that Infernape has been putting... Uh, like, that makes me... Um, that's his second most annoying monster to me. Like, it makes me the second most nervous. <laughs> and that is the Rapidash. With the undefeated season so far. Yes. Uh, he just had great strategy playing with Infernape. I didn't like that he didn't let Mega Aggron shine the way he he could have, but that Infernape play was just on point. I'm sad Coma O got his ass smacked right after he got his Z move off. Like I was hoping to see more out of that. Yeah, um, and that could have possibly been game changing there too. Did he get yeah? Out? He did. He did. And then Matt's Weavile, I still enjoy that it's holding a King's Rock and it's got beat up, so it's like my Chinchino with Skill Link in uh, the King's Rock. Yeah. Just has that 10% chance on every hit to flinch, and I think that's what he started doing. I think that's how he actually knocked out a few of those Pokemon. He actually knocked out Mega Aggron with Weavile. I know, I was like, why don't you switch <laughs> that out? He's just always like beating it to death. <laughs> He's just beat up, beat up, beat up. And that's that's what I have here too. His Weavile set is amazing. I I like watching that thing battle because you don't really see that beat up set. I've never seen that run in draft league or anywhere. So it's like, man, for him to come up with that and make it work, it's pretty nice to see. He actually turned me onto that move. I bred it into a Charizard, and when we were in our multi battle league, uh, he had a justified. Arcanine that I would use a special attacking Charizard and I would beat up the Arcanine and it would uh, power it up every hit from the beat up. And since my Charizard was a special attacker, it would do very little damage to the Arcanine. <laughs> that is an amazing prep for doubles coming up. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, just most of these games this week have, have been really good. Some should have been closer than the scoreboard shows, but... I mean, there was only three games that were, like, completely out of hand. All the other ones are very close. Yeah, I like those close games. When every Pokemon makes an entrance, that's when you know that those guys have been paying attention to one another's moves. Oh, yeah, and there's some things where it's like sometimes you're one step ahead of your opponent, and then, boom, you flop it right back. And that's just been going good in this draft league. Um, I didn't have it marked down. It was the only one. How many Pokemon did Morgan have left when he beat Yale? He had four. He got a plus four, four differential. Gastrodon actually got three kills, and Cloyster cleaned up at the end with three as well. His his Gastrodon's been putting in work. I'm very happy with his, how Morgan's been battling. Oh, yeah. For a defensive mind, he's a, it's actually doing great. And, <laughs> I, I think I noticed that might be the Snorlax I made him because I noticed it was the Glutton. <laughs> Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he's like that Snorlax. He's been he's brought it to every game, so I've noticed. But yeah, that's the that's the lineup for right now. Rapidash and Tyranitars are undefeated in that division over there. They play each other week four, so that is a battle you are gonna want to see. The battle of the undefeated. So who's gonna come out on top? And also in the Kanto division, we have four teams with two and one. We have a few teams lacking behind with one and two, and only one zero and three team. So, it's anybody's race there. Am I the zero and three? <laughs> well, you're the zero and three in the Alola, but you're not the only one over there. <laughs> well, well, preview for week four, things change. <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadow. All right, real quick, we're gonna go ahead and show you the PML singles draft league kill leaders. And tied for first place, we have Mega Scizor and Nihilego with 10 kills in three games. 
That's true. That's, yeah. It was sad to see those two having to go head to head this week. And they hashed it out. Uh, let's see. I know Nihilo got a bunch of good kills in this one. He got four kills, and that was actually the six zero. Uh, Polly Reyes yeah. did not get not one kill. <laughs> uh, I was sad to see that Caesar switch in and then die to the Stealth Rocks. <laughs> yes, it's like uh, could have been avoided, and since it did die to Stealth Rocks, Nihilego got that kill. Yep. So it's just like Nihilego just racking up shit when it's not even in the game anymore. <laughs> And tied for second and third, we have Dragonite from the Fur Alligators, we have Infernate from the Rapidash, and we have the Tauros from the Tauros, with all six kills. So they're averaging two kills per game, the other team is averaging, what, 2.6 something something? So something something. <laughs> they're, they're getting kills left and right, and they are showing why their teams are in the positions they're in right now. Definitely. But that's it. Do you have anything to add on to this week three recap, Dusty? Um, I do not, but I want to ask. Can you send me the picture of the differentials? Oh, yeah. I'm going to post it in the Facebook group here in a minute. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, that's us signing off for PMLDC. Have a good week.